wanna play? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 killer doll horror movies. You should probably run. For this list, we're looking at some of the most notable fright fests that center on malicious dolls, be they downright good or just trashy fun. We will be including doll-adjacent antagonists like puppets, since they are essentially in the same vein. However, we'll be omitting films that only feature creepy dolls in a limited capacity, in addition to allowing for just one film per franchise. Did your favorite make the list? Be a doll and leave a comment below. Number 10. Dolly Dearest. Oh goody, we're going for a ride. Dolly Dearest is definitely inspired by another Possessed Doll movie on this list, probably the Possessed Doll movie, and is definitely worse. But how many of these do we actually go into expecting quality cinema anyway? Jesse, now we can play! When an evil spirit inhabits the body of the titular porcelain doll, it begins to infect its owner the young Jessica. This, of course, causes much turmoil for her family, and mayhem ensues. <laughs> Though critically lambasted, Dolly Dearest is good for so bad it's good viewing, as Dolly's facial expressions make for some truly horrifying visuals. Certainly a far cry from the best effects work of its day. Number 9. Dead Silence I don't know about you, but Lisa's hungry for Chinese. I think my wife's gone crazy. <laughs> Before James Wan was the horror icon he is today, his sophomore effort, Dead Silence, saw him establishing himself in supernatural terror after delivering the mega-hit Saw. Though certainly a cult favorite, the former film, too, wasn't met with positive marks at the time of release. It tells the story of a man returning to his hometown to solve the mystery of his wife's murder, which seems to revolve around a deceased ventriloquist named Mary Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> By all accounts, Dead Silence possesses all of Juan's delectable campiness that would be sprinkled through his later efforts, only it doesn't quite gel with the somber tone. In any case, this will make you look twice at ventriloquist dummies, if you didn't already. Beware the stare of Mary Shaw. She had no children, only dolls. And if you see her in your dreams, be sure you never, ever scream. Number 8. The Boy And this is our son, Bronze. <laughs> you may be saying to yourself, but watch Mojo, what about that spoiler ending? To which we say, sure, but it beats putting the plain awful Brahms The Boy 2 on here. In all seriousness, while The Boy may not be as much of a killer doll movie as its sequel, it certainly operates like one for a bulk of the runtime. <laughs> the story of a nanny being hired to look over a porcelain doll that may be haunted by the owner's deceased son isn't necessarily groundbreaking. And the movie definitely plays it safe with a steady stream of predictable jump scares. But depending on your response to that twist, coupled with some sleek cinematography and atmosphere, you may just have a fun time with Brahms. No offense, Brahms, but you kind of creep me out. Calling pop culture superfans everywhere. Do you love to argue with Watch Mojo's top 10 ranks? Introducing Watch Mojo's first and very own party game. Bring your superpowers to the table and fight for your pick to be at the top of the list. It's all the fun of the comment section, but in real life. Number 7. Puppet Master Is there a direct-to-video horror movie franchise quite like Puppet Master? What the hell do you think you're doing? Oh, no, you don't. I'm the master. And you're the puppet. The movie that got the ball rolling for Full Moon Pictures, the first Puppet Master hit the home market in 1989 and instantly found a cult following. While not a critical darling in its own right, this one has a wonderfully shrewd understanding of what it is, getting to the low-budget glee the subgenre promises. <laughs> Though the possessed puppets would get more outrageous as the series progressed, the ones featured here are nothing to scoff at, from Leech Woman to Tunneler to the flagship character Blade. <laughs> No! No! Ah! 
If you want nothing more than kooky bloodletting and wild times from your killer doll movie, then Puppet Master is the one for you. Number 6. Dolls Stuart Gordon is best known within the industry for directing the original Reanimator back in 1985. Dolls isn't nearly as good, but it does feature some of the same practical effects craftsmanship that gave the former film such life. This time around, a handful of individuals take solace from a storm in the mansion of an elderly toy maker and his wife. However, they soon come to learn that the couple are not what they seem, and their creations are a whole lot worse. <laughs> The simply titled Dolls isn't anything to write home about, but it does have some memorable small and large-scale set pieces. And it does definitely feel like the first in a series of low-budget thrillers that sadly never came to pass. Number 5. Suddenly in the Dark Also known as Suddenly at Midnight and Suddenly in Dark Night, this is the first non-English language entry on our list. This one coming out of South Korea. It concerns the plight of Son Hee, a woman who becomes suspicious of her and her husband's new housemaid, Miok. At the crux of Son Hee's fears is Miok's doll that also happens to haunt her dreams. Bringing a psychological angle as well as an erotic slant to the proceedings, Suddenly in the Dark is unlike any of these other films in that it's more interested in Son Hee's fracturing psyche than tiny bloodletting. It too will keep you guessing right up to the very end. <laughs> Number 4. Annabelle Creation Can you help me? What do you need? Your soul! The titular doll made a real impression in her brief appearance in the first Conjuring movie, but it's arguably her second solo outing that sees her reach her full potential. In this prequel, we learn the origin of the titular doll, as the demon possessing it begins terrorizing an orphanage for young girls. Unlike many of the films on this list, the Annabelle movies don't feature a doll inflicting harm directly. Rather, it merely acts as a conduit for all the standard spooky goings on. But we'd be lying if we said every time we saw her porcelain visage on screen that we didn't quiver in our seats. Couple that with the actually terrifying frights, and this is a horror prequel that's actually good. Number 3. Magic the whole ventriloquist has a split personality manifesting in his dummy thing has been done numerous times, but seldom as good as in Richard Attenborough's magic. Hello, everybody. This is Mrs. Norman Maine. My mother thanks you, my father thanks you, my sister thanks you, and I thank you. You have nothing to fear but fear itself, nothing to give but blood, sweat, and tears, nothing to lose but your chains. Here he is, boys. Here he is, world. Here he is. Starring a young Anthony Hopkins, the film follows his character Corky, an up-and-coming magician whose ventriloquist dummy Fats seems to have a mind of his own. This threatens to uproot Corky's life and even endanger his old flame, played by Anne Margaret. You thought Peg didn't remember. Aww. You knew who I was too? Throughout the movie, we're left to question just how much of Corky is in Fats, or if the dummy really is dangerous on its own. It is an effective psychological horror that doesn't show its hand hardly at all, and instead relies on Attenborough's sharp direction and especially Hopkins' convincing performance. Hey, you know what I think? Oh, what do you think? We're gonna be a star! Number 2. Megan Megan, what are you doing? Couldn't sleep. Occupational hazard. Updating the horror genre for the digital age is something the industry has seldom pulled off, with its concepts coming off more kitschy than clever. Megan, however, manages to get the formula just right, delivering a killer AI movie that's actually pretty solid. You need a great deal of self-awareness to pull off a movie like this, and with TikTok-inspiring dance moves and some genuine frights, this one definitely checks all the boxes. The design of Megan herself is already super uncanny valley, which makes things all the more unsettling when she gets overprotective and flips out. Megan, turn off. Recalibrating response model. <laughs>
it feels like we're entering a new era of gleefully campy filmmaking. And with a memorable villain like Megan leading the charge, we could not be more excited. I have a new primary user now. Me. <laughs> Number 1. Pinocchio's Revenge Who would have thought that a movie about a murderous Pinocchio would be this good? Oh, what? Our nose is growing? Okay, fine. Our real number one is… Number 1. Child's Play You all knew this was coming. <laughs> I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. While Chucky's undergone multiple successful makeovers over the years, nothing makes us scream and cackle in equal measure quite like the original. What's wrong? Gun jam? <laughs> It may seem obvious now, but the movie actually plays like a compelling whodunit throughout its first half, making us question if the young Andy really is behind the murders. But once Chucky's true nature is confirmed, that's when the proceedings become endlessly fun. I said talk to me, damn it, or else I'm gonna throw you in the fire! You stupid bitch! <laughs> Powered by Brad Dourif's iconic vocal performance, Chucky cements himself here as a true icon of slasher cinema. There's a fine line when creating a killer doll movie that's both silly and scary, but that is exactly why we keep coming back to this one all these years later. Ugly doll. <laughs> you. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.